Hello. Welcome to IoT and Apps Classroom today. And uh, my name is Jock Reed. I'm going to be your moderator. I'm the IoT Developer Evangelist um, for DevNet. And right now we have uh, Krishna with the IoT DC team. And so he's a rock star. He's going to uh -huh. tell you about uh, cloud connected uh, data. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Krishna Changavali, Technical Marketing Engineer for IoT Software. It was supposed to be Lionel Hunt who was presenting this session. Sorry, bear, you have to bear with me for the next 40 minutes. Uh, we had a customer issue, and we chose to send our manager instead. And uh, OK. So what is IoT, right? Uh, IoT is all about leveraging machine data. The data is there. It is stuck somewhere. And there are business problems that need to be solved. And the way to solve it is leverage that machine data. And we have to somehow extract that mission data. That IoT is all about business outcomes. Right. So it always starts with a business problem. People want to maintain, have a preventive maintenance, improve the efficiency of their uh, equipment, improve personal safety, detect the quality of products that is being manufactured, and go back and fix it. Track your assets, improve operational efficiency. We, ca we can go on, but, but the whole idea is there are business problems out there. There is data available to fix the problem, but just that the da data is hidden somewhere. It is locked up. It is not being used. So the first step in that pr process is capturing the device data. Right? The data has to be captured. It is being generated. It is locked up. It has to be captured. And the next thing you do is you move the data. Right? The data has to move from where it is today for it to have some kind of a desirable business outcome. And when you move the data, most of the data comes in the raw format. It is being generated. Tons of data is being generated per second, kind of depending on the sensor you have. And it is in a raw format. If you have to make some, if you have to use it, uh, it has to be transformed. So the first you extract the data, next you move it. But when you're moving it, you want to transform it. Once you start transforming it from being an unstructured into a structured data, it gives you the capability to now apply rules, policies, analytics. Now there is more capability. And then now you can choose to route data to write applications. You don't need to always route all the data that is being generated. It may be a part of a subset of the data. The reason is people want to anonymize a certain part of certain aspects of the data. You don't want to send, you don't want your competitor to know how many parts or what kind of parts are being generated, even if the data leaks, right? So some level of anonymization some level of obfuscation and uh, splitting of the data has to happen before it gets routed to applications to, to other places. And then it has to deliver, right? You have to deliver it to write applications, and it has to be delivered reliably and securely. If you see from the point that the data is captured to the point it gets delivered, there is one common theme right here, which is called the network, right? It is the network that has to transform, carry this data, take this from one place to another for it to be used. And if it is the network and the data that has to be used, then you know Cisco knows what has to be done to make this happen. Network is the platform, and it is the network that is the hidden substrata of all these Internet of Things, because the data has to move. The data has to move securely. You don't want, if you want to extract data out of a plant floor, let's say you go to Ford or GM, Today, not even a screwdriver comes out of this plant floor. Now we are asking them to send data out of their factory to a cloud. You need to gain their confidence. It has to be secure. It has to be reliable. They should be sure that it is bulletproof, that this data is secure, and no one can come through the same data path into your network and break things. So network is the platform, and Cisco is the, Cisco is the company that can provide that reliable and secure solution. Right? So, but to achieve this goal, right, we need the help of the developers. Because there is a lot of rules, and there is a lot of code, and there is a lot of compute that has to be done for this solution to work. The first phase is at the device level. Right? We need to write code to extract data from these devices. So there is a place for developers to come in and write code, make use of SDKs, build microservices that can deploy at the edge that will extract the data. 
And for this to be deployed, it is not going to be on a one machine, one factory, one location basis. It is going to be widely distributed. So there should be a centralized way of deploying this microservice that is being built to be pushed across to distributed locations. Once you have this microservice pushed across, once you have this code binary distributed, you need to decide who can push this. Who can push the binary? Who can extract data? Who can configure data? So now comes the next layer of the configuration, control, and access. But all this has to happen over a connection. And if you take IoT, we are looking at 2G, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, name it, you have all kinds of networking uh, layers, not all kinds of networking technologies are going to be involved, right? So how do you decide how much of data I'm using? Who is using most amount of data? Should the data be transferred overnight? Should, be, should it be done during the day? What time slot? How sh should, uh, what if uh, you stop seeing data? How do you go fix it? Is the provider at, is the, the fault with the provider? Is it the fault with the SIM card? Jasper provides you the technology to figure out how to manage all these connections. You can see that there is a solution at every layer that Cisco has already. And then it has all to be, it all, all, all of this should be maintained because in many cases, this is not like a fun project of collecting a temperature data outside my house and posting it in the cloud, right? This is about business outcome. It has to be done. It is mission critical. If you are collecting data from robots on a factory floor from a factory in Detroit, this is a mission critical data. This is going to help them decide when and how a factory, the assembly line is going to get stopped because the data is about the robot. Maybe the robot breaks down, the assembly line stops. So this is not a fun project that we are talking about that everyone with an MQTT broker publish a message, now you are an IoT company. This has to be done at scale. This has to be done securely. And we need to stand behind them to make sure that this operates 24 by 7. So now we have given, up, given the vision, but what do we have today? We, are going to, we, have to, we have a long way to go, but what do we have today to accomplish this solution? We have the network and the computing hardware. Cisco has a line of products called uh, IR 8x9, 829, 809, IE 4K switches. All these switches are not just uh, switches and routers. They are not basic networking gear. They also have a compute in it. They have a CPU in them. You can run code on them. So think about running a third-party code inside a Cisco hardware. This, this networking gear is sitting out there already in trucks, substations, buses, and there are many places where this hardware sits today. We give you the ability to push code onto, this, onto the CPU out that, that is shared with the networking side also. So you have the gear, and you, you have the ability to write software and push to this gear. And then we can decide how this connection exists, right? How is this connection managed? Cisco, Jasper does that. In all cases, edge compute is not just enough. Think about an oil rig, right? The data is going to come in, uh, is going to just flow in. It is not like a sensor to, or it's in thousands. So the edge Cisco gear is just going to be consuming data. It is not analyzing, it is not looking at anything. It is just sucking the data in and sending it up to a bigger compute machine which is a fog node. The fog node may have a parse stream database sitting there, which can handle a million inserts per second. So you are just pushing data, million, million inserts per second from, all these, from a single oil rig into this database. And now you have another service that sits next to that parse stream database, reading the data out of, from parse stream and trying to analyze it. So that is, an, that is another microservice that someone else can build. So you can build application on the edge, that knows how to talk to a machine because it is a common framework that is already out there. People can deploy Java, Python, C code on it. And then you can write service at the fog layer to do more analysis because we give you a UCS server. Now this is sitting on an oil rig, collecting millions of data, millions of data points, analyzing it. Now you send back some real-time decisions back to this edge node, say, go shut this valve down, or increase the flow, decrease, what, whatever it may be, right? So there is a place for developer at each level in the stack. And finally, right, the data comes up to the cloud. So what do you want to do with the data, right? You want to store it, you want to send it to IBM, you want to send it to Watson for analytics, you want to send it to Azure for analytics. 
it's up to you. We can route the data. We can route a subset of data. You, we can route a data when it passes a threshold. It's, it's completely configurable, and then you re the data can reach the right destination. And even there, you have a role to play in consuming the data, analyzing it, and making further uh, help in, in decision making. Right? So th that's where you come in. Right? You can build a vertical market application. You can pick, I am specializing in uh, analyzing the data from this particular robot company. Right? So you can work with us. We can build a vertical solution that says, when you are, we can be partners when we go in. We can say that if, if this is the robot you have, we know how to ma maintain that robot and analyze the data. So what we are trying to give you is that from the cloud, you, we can push the microservices to the edge. On the edge, we have an optimized hardware. It has a footprint that is right enough to run edge applications. You don't need to have another Raspberry Pi or any other single board computer sitting next to your hardware on the edge extra because the computing gear already, the network gear already has it. Now, since the networking gear already has it, it comes in with all security features of a Cisco IOS operating system. And since you're running code at the edge, there is very little latency. You suck the data in, you make a decision, you send it back. And after the fact that you have made a decision, now you can offload this data to the cloud as and when it permits, time permits, bandwidth permits, whatever it is. Right? So you ha have the intelligence at the edge, and we give you that capability. And given that uh, this is a common development environment, it, is, it can run on a range of routers, switches, and on UCS. So you are not going to be developing uh, applications, different applications for different hardware or different levels in the stack. It is the same code. You run one instance of it in the edge. You run 10 instances of it in the fog. And maybe you run many more instances in the cloud. Right? What works today? Right? It's all good to hear all this, but what works? Right? Is there something real that Cisco is doing? Right? The first, fa the first problem that is being solved is that, OK, I want to deploy all these gears, right? OK, I want to send a router with each robot. Who is going to configure all these robots? Right? Who is going to go down? Who is an engineer? Who is going to be configuring all this? The solution is you turn the robot on. You claim the gateway in your organization by scanning the serial number. The portal will hear from the, from the, from the router. It will build a tunnel. It's a secure tunnel, right? The first call home is going to be secure. The next step is going to be a tunnel. We push the configuration down, and we know if this robot requires this application. This, this is the robot that is being tied to this router. So it requires this application to interpret data from this robot. That application is going to get pushed automatically from the cloud to the router. Once that application gets pushed, the data starts flowing in automatically, right? If you take all this complexity out, what does the customer see? Right? He deploys a gateway. He scans it, and he sees the data flowing. Right? That's all the customer is going to see. We have done the heavy lifting of building the basic infrastructure that is going to make network secure, configuration automatic, the application gets deployed, the data just starts flowing. Once the data just starts flowing, we also give you the ability to route data to wherever you want. It can, you, you can pick the cloud vendor. Today, we can send out of the box to Azure. You want to take it to a data center, it's a basic AMQP 1.2 or 0.9. You can take it to your application anywhere in the cloud. Come another three months later, we will be working with IBM, with Google. It doesn't matter. We will work with every vendor out there and build adapters to take the data where you wish. So, this is the five layers, right? So the device, you can push a microservice to the edge. You can push a microservice to the fog. You can push a microservice to the data center. Or you can have a portal to which we can route the data to. All the green balls are the microservices that can be developed. And the blue balls are, is the data, right? So you keep working on the data. You filter the data. You transform the data. You store it, or you route it wherever you want. So the, the flow I showed you about claiming a gateway is real, right? It, it works today. The product is yet to be launched. It is going GLA, limited availability in a month. The edge portion of the code, edge portion of the product, which is an on-prem, real-time uh, response kind of a solution, is being launched. I think, I'm not sure it's yesterday or today in London. It is going to be launched. So Cisco is moving fast, and we are moving 
into this space. Really, we are we are there. So if, if so, we saw that there is a cloud edge play, there is a fog play, and what is the cloud play? Right, the cloud play comes in the form of a gateway management. The gateway management is out of the box. You don't need to worry about uh, how this gateway is going to be managed. Right, take it for granted. You ship our gateway; it is going to get managed. Once Cisco router sits, once this router sits in the network, we enable remote access. Right, so you, it is pretty much like you log into a a gateway from wherever you want. It's not even a gateway, right? You log into the device behind the gateway. Because gateway is going to be, the router is going to be invisible to you, right? Let's say you have a machine out there. It has some kind of an operating system running on it. You can, if you can remote desktop into it, you can do it. Because we give you a VPN, any connect VPN client into our portal. From inside our portal, we route the connection all the way down to the edge. So think about it like once you're on the VPN to that router, you run a printer discovery software on your laptop, it is going to discover every printer that is behind that router on the edge. Instead of a printer, think, think about it as like there are five machines that Siemens built, and you run a Siemens discovery software on your laptop. You are a remote expert now, discovering all the machines. You can click on a machine, go flip a switch, and you log yourself off. You are the remote expert. This comes out of the box. You don't need to do anything about it because the portal comes in with a way for you to remote log into any device you want. So then you can, we can remote access, then you can manage applications. You can push a microservice to the fog, to the edge. You can start an application. You can start an application, upgrade it. The next step that is going to happen is data is going to start flowing in. What do you want to do with the data? How much of data do you want? Subset of it. I want all the data. I want to parse it by content, rules, policy. And, and all this is built based on Cisco secure technologies. Right? All these technologies exist today. And we are just putting them together to make it work for this solution. And we are making it for scale. We are building it for scale, and we are building it to make it extremely easy so that it's all cloud managed. A lot of it comes out of the box. The developer's role is to build, fill the gap in terms of building the applications at each level in the stack. And I just want to check time. OK, I have time. So these are the general patterns that you see, right? Um, most of the consumer technologies, they fall in the two-tier pattern. Your thermostat, it just directly talks to the cloud. There is no one in between, right? And the next level is three tier, right? Where there is an edge node. Maybe, for example, an interesting example would be a truck, right? You have a, a router or a device sitting in the truck that is collecting data from the, from the engine and other telemetry, and it pushes to the cloud. There is nothing in between because uh, the, it, it is not always going to be connected. It, buff, it buffers data for some time if it is not in the connection, and then sense it whenever it gets a chance, right? But when you go into very data-intensive locations, like there are hundreds and thousands of sensors in an oil rig, and they are not at locations where you can have permanent connectivity, and it is not desirable for some application sitting in the cloud to make a decision and send that command back, right? So in, the, in, those, in those cases, we have this aggregation node called the fog node, which does a lot of intelligence. Uh, it, it is compute plus store. So we, you will see all kinds of deployments. And uh, three-tier and four-tier is the most in interesting for us, uh, because that's where a lot of industries and factories uh, fit in. And uh, most of the consumer technologies are going to lie in the, in the two-tier model. So what we have is a pretty open system. Everyone agrees to this system. It, people give different names, but there is a device. There is an edge node. That is a fog, depending on the business case and the uh, vertical that you're in. And then, depending on the fog node, from the data may go into a data center or into the cloud. But this, this is pretty much a, a, a standard with different names, right? And that is, we have Cisco networking with all security and everything that you know about. We bring in gateway and connection management in the form of uh, the new product and Cisco Jasper. You have that ability to use some of the pre-built microservices. Like we have some protocols, industrial protocols, available in the form of a DS link in form of uh, applications ready to go. But if, if there is something new, the APIs are out there. It can be built. We can de co-develop or we can buy it. You can become a, you can license it for us. We can go to deals together, right? 
And then IoT cloud services. We do a lot of it in the cloud. You can develop other applications. We can route data. That becomes your vertical applications. So it's a pretty open system. You have a place to do, uh, your applications can do filtering at the edge. You can do correlation. You can be on the fog node uh, aggregating data and doing something with the time series database, right? You can process the events as it comes in, right? And then, but we do the gateway management and connectivity management for you already. C, Java, JavaScript, Python, pick your language, right? If you want to run applications at the edge, look at, uh, pick, a, pick a vertical, figure out what works. We have applications in Java, in C, Dart. So th there is space for every language in, in, at every point in the stack. There are, it is some, it's like horses for the races, right? So you have, you have seen what we have. And uh, I'm going to show what we have also, so it is not, I'm not going to walk away here not showing anything. So Cisco has the solution in the entire stack. We have the hardware, we have the software, we know how to manage the network, and we can route the data to the right places securely and reliably, right? So the, at the edge in the fog, we need intelligence at the edge, right? So we, we can take action based on data, and we need real-time response. That is an application that, that can be developed it can be a simple protocol converter that extracts data and dumps it up. Some applications, some vendors need just that, right? They don't want to emit even a bit of data. They don't want to miss anything, right? They want everything. In that case, it is a straightforward application. If you want to do filtering, any, anything at the edge, there is a place for development. You, you may be developing a simple protocol converter, right? Okay, how do I talk to this particular protocol that this machine supports? There are approximately 140 different protocols out there. And then we have to transform the data from being unstructured into a usable format. And then analytics. You build analytics. It can be on the edge. It can be in the fog. It can be in the cloud, right? So if you can run in the smallest footprint, yes, run, run on the edge. If you need a bit more compute power, OK, we can run it on a server, on a one-hour or a two-hour server on the fog node. Or if it is something that you want to do in the cloud level, yes, you can go do it either. So if you can run the same code at multiple places, yes, we can, we can give you a way to push it down to different levels in the stack from a cloud portal. Visualization, right? That is something that comes up time and again. We cannot build just one dashboard, right? A WinForm needs, they need a, a special kind of a dashboard. A trucking company needs a different kind of a dashboard. So there is always place for building dashboards because uh, different verticals have different needs. Same thing with cloud, right? In the cloud, you have vertical-specific applications, preventive maintenance machine analytics, right? So you can run the same. If you are building data in the cloud and the edge, then you can control how the data is getting generated, how the data is getting formatted, how it is being transformed, so that you can send the data, the, you can send the right data in the right format your cloud application needs, right? So that, that, is, that is kind of an advantage if you start developing applications at both cloud and the edge. Again, right, some people want visualization at the edge, uh, because they don't, they don't want to depend on a cloud application to look at a data from a machine that is right next to you. You don't want the data to go all around the world. You want to see the data right there. So you can build a visualization at the edge, but it is going to be local for just that machine. Or you can build it in the cloud so that it's, an aggreg it's based on the aggregated data. Right? The thing is, like, like we showed you, like you can deploy a gateway uh, using a phone app. We give you a reference app, but I don't know how your workflow looks. Your workflow may require the technician to do 10 different things before he deploys a gateway. Fine, take our APIs, fit it into your workflow, and use it, right? So what is going to be available pretty soon? Uh, REST APIs for the portal. It's going to be Swagger style. Uh, you can do admin and management with it. For FOG, we, are go we will give you sample applications in Python and Java. And we have built a jar file that has a rules engine built in so that any rules you push in the cloud, create in the cloud will get pushed to the edge. So it's one rule that, gets, that runs everywhere. And the jar file has the rules engine built in, so you can build a Java application that uses the jar file. And primarily, we support AMQP 0.9 and 1.0. So we, you, we give you a, a, a sample consumer that knows how to consume data from our portal. You can feel free to reuse it and build your application based on it. Right. Today, uh, the IOX apps run on IR8x9, IE 4K, and uh, Python and Java is predominantly being used. 
and if you, another version of uh, Edge uh, product that we have where it is, we can, it runs on x86, x86 Linux also, Java, Dart, and C are like the three most popular uh, languages that, is, that are being used. So we need you, right? We have built a horizontal product, and uh, we are building it. It will be out there. So come Cisco Live, you will get to see more of it. But there is a place for developers at every stage, right? We want people to build applications at the edge, at the fog, and in the cloud, right? We need developers, and we we are going to make it easy. We are going to build. We are going to build a. We want to build a strong developer relationship, right? Cisco is changing. The world is changing, and. Uh, that's what we need you, we need developers to make this solution happen. Now I'm going to switch to a, a demo. Hopefully it works because I had some connectivity problem with my gateway. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, is the portal of a to be launched product. This is not yet there. Uh, people don't have access to this. Uh, So now the product is called IoT Data Connect, but uh, I don't know what it will be called in a month, right? Legal has the final say on it. So this is, this is the dashboard from where you can deploy the uh, gateways, right? You come in here, give a serial number, and pick a template. You can choose a template with LAN, with Wi-Fi, without Wi-Fi, with applications. You can deploy a gateway from here. To show a sample flow, I can show it like let me pick a, a sample gateway. Uh, pick a number one. This is not a real gateway, but I want to show the flow. Right. So you're going to, the gateway is going to show up here. This happens instantaneously here, but in reality, it's going to take a couple of minutes because you may be on a cellular connection, 2G, 3G, Ethernet, whatever it is. So what is going to happen is we, the gateway makes a the gateway pings us, and since we claim it, okay, it knows that this belongs to this organization, and we verify the certificate. We make a tunnel, push the configuration down, and if you have built a, con if you have built a configuration already, and uh, you have chosen an application to be part of that configuration, we will push that application also down, right? If you think about it, this may be an edge node. This may be a fog node. All we know is this, gate this particular entity has has connection to me, and it, it talks, I, I can understand the APIs that these endpoint talks, so I can push an application there, right? So, and then from, the, from here, I can look at all the applications that are running. I can go, go in and start an application, stop an application. I can install an application, right? From here. So this is how exactly how you will be able to push applications from the cloud all the way down, right? So now, let me see if the visualization is working. So what I have here, uh, I cannot lift the router. So I have a J1939 simulator. This is like your truck. Imagine this is your truck, right? I cannot bring a truck here, so I got a simulator, right? If I fiddle these numbers, you see things are changing, right? This is real. I'm not doing it. So this is running in a portal, right? This is, you see this uh, a public IP address. This is somewhere in the cloud. And this is, uh, this is with me here, and it is going through this router sitting in this box via a 4G cellular connection. This may be your truck, right? But for, for me to read data from this, I need someone to write an application that sits on this router, right? Who is going to write that application? It can be you. It can, it, you know how to write this application. You know about this machine. You know this is something specific you build. You build an application, and you push it to this router. This, then the router knows how to read. Then we know how to extract data from here. But to deploy this gateway here, you haven't done anything, because we have built everything that you need to push, get the gateway on the network with the right configuration, conf making sure the 3G connection works. Using Jasper Cisco, we can make sure that your data usage your connection signal, signal strength, quality of signal, everything is going to be managed. So all you're developing is an application that is going to get pushed to this gateway. 
It is reading the application. It is reading the data from this simulator, right? Now, you want the data to be visualized, right? Again, DGLUX is a third-party tool. All we did is build an AMQP adapter so that it can extract data from our portal and consume it, right? So what we have, what we have given you is something that scales, a system that scales, system that works, networking is taken care of, you have to just build microservices at the edge, in the fog, and in the cloud that knows how to use this data and, and bring out business outcomes that your customer needs. Right, you can come here, fiddle around with this. There are a couple of more minutes. You can ask questions. Yeah. You can take questions. Yeah. You're blown away. Thank you. They are blown away. They're blown away. Yeah. It's just amazing. Oh, hello. So yeah, did uh, did anyone have any questions for Krishna here? Yeah. Uh, so I'm still a little confused about the role of the fog computing layer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the gateway is closest to the end devices, mm -hmm. so it can take some quick actions and reply back. Mm -hmm. Uh, but why do we really need the fog computing layer once you have the cloud as well? In so uh, the example that I gave before, right? Let's say you're an oil rig, right? Uh, the edge node is just collecting data from the sensors, right? When you are collecting data from the sensor, uh, you are not, you don't want to overload that that particular node to do analytics also, right? So you you may be collecting data from n different points on an oil rig, but those nodes are predominantly just collecting data, right? And they're not storing it either because the data is just flowing in. It is like megabytes a second kind of data. So maybe you put in a, a UCS server kind of a one RU, two RU server that has a parse stream database that is purpose built for IoT, right? It can do million inserts per second. It is a time series database. It, it is a very unique product in a way, right? So you collect the data, you push it into the parse stream. Now someone who knows what to do with this data, right? This is coming in from n number of sensors on an oil rig. Someone, someone else who has the business logic knows to read this data and then decide that, oh, maybe we are not drilling right, or the pumping, there is something wrong in the pump, or there is something else is happening below the ground. We have to do something about it, right? So that decision has to be made. It cannot be made in a router. The router can only give you so much compute to read, to write only so much of uh, CPU power, right? You cannot store on it. You cannot run your machine learning big data analytics on it. It can be done outside the edge node. You make a decision, you push the decision back to the edge node so that it, it now communicates that back to the sensor. And this fog node can decide, uh, you have much more intelligence in the fog node because it's a server. It can decide, okay, my satellite connection is weak or my, based on the signal strength, it can decide to send a bunch of data up to the cloud. Right, so there is a, the fog node comes into picture when there is a real connectivity and other issues that come in and the decision has to be made like this closer to the data source and not at a not in the cloud. Yeah. So uh, fog nodes are not necessarily upstream from the router. They can be co-located with, uh, with the gateway. It's, it's, it's just the functionality that you were shown, yes. not yeah. the, uh, not, you know, the in a, in a way, it's upstream because uh, the edge routers may be just pushing data out to a fog node because there is no way to store it here. They may, sto they may be storing it, analyzing it, and sending decision back. So for, but it, 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 like I said, right, it just depends on the, uh, the situation, right? If it is a truck, you don't need a fog node because there is no place for a fog node. Yeah. Right, thank you. The volume of data, the time latency, everything brings in a fog node into picture. Uh, I have a question between the connect uh, connectivity between the age and the sensor. I mean, how it's connected. How the sensor is connected? Yeah, connected to the edge. Like. Okay, so in this case, the sensor is connected over serial cable, right? Mm. We are not assuming every sensor out there is Ethernet. Every yeah. sensor out yeah. there is not IP address. This box, this A29 router has a serial, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. So, so I have used a converter to take the J1939 data and put it in, push it into a serial cable. It also has USB, right? Mm. Down the line, we will have CAN bus also integrated. So 
-hmm. the, the next series of industrial routers, edge routers that come from Cisco will have more physical adapters that is required for this particular uh, section of the market. I see. Yes. And also, can I stream the video using this ITDC? I mean. Uh, no, we are not built for, okay, the, the way data comes to us is over MQTT, right? If you can stream video over MQTT, you can go do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you cannot, but it's yeah. not the right way to do it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, it's good.